Ah, thanks, honey. Hey guys, it's just me today. Uh, my wife is right beside me. Uh, she's been behind the camera uh, for the first time for me just to be in front of the camera alone. Um, I think it symbolizes a, me being alone is because I'm going to share uh, the most vulnerable times of my life um, to what God leads me to share. And um, so just me today and I'm excited to be with you and I wish I had the great spill that my wife has and uh, it's, um, but it's, I, I don't even know what you're saying that time, but um, welcome back to my page. Yeah, that's you don't yeah. need to say any of that though. <laughs> I'll add it to yeah, that. you add it. But yeah, just welcome, um, and I really uh, I'm gonna pray in a second, and uh, I hope uh, you can uh, take away something from that, my story. Okay, so my wife's right here. You can see her hand. I'm just gonna pray. Hello, guys. It's me, <laughs> Joa. Welcome back not, to the page. I'm not coming on camera today, am I? Yeah. Okay, let's pray. Abba Father, Lord, it's a quick prayer, just, but just to say we glorify you. You are honored in this place and we love you. And we ask, Lord, that you speak through me right now. Uh, speak to the, the people, anyone watching, even if it's just the one person watching that you touch their heart. I pray, Holy Spirit, touch their heart. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, Jenny. So the title of the message today is Through the Brokenness. And uh, we, all ha we all have our uh, trials and tribulations. We all have our moments of, of, of pain and moments of um, why me? You know, why me? Um, but I just want to encourage you. Um, God knew you. Um, that's why he chose you to bear this burden. And I'm telling you, I would not wish the stuff that I've been through and that I'm going to share today to my worst enemy. But at the same time, as tough as it's been, it's also been um, wonderful. For, should, for the sheer fact, the story I'm going to share today actually brought me to Christ. So there is my, my many testimonies in it, or quite, actually quite a large part of my testimonies in the reason but um yeah i was gonna get into it uh, my battle that i've battled with is anxiety um and um i'm just start where it started for me so i was i think i was 18 or 19 and my dad just died in 2003 and um my dad was my best friend he was awesome he was a kind of guy that um that if he was cooking dinner and he's cooked all the dinner and he's planned it for um, me, my brother, and my mum and himself, and say I just uh, I come back from being outside uh, with a buddy, and I'd be like, hey dad, my friend's coming over for dinner, and um, he would give up his dinner uh, so my friend could eat. So, um, and this is in England, like so I don't know if you know too much about England, but. It's pretty interesting, like if you if I'm going to a friend's house for and to knock on their door and it happens to be at dinner time, um, they used to like make me, and this is normal, this is not just because it's me, uh, but they would make me like wait outside their house while my friend goes in and eats dinner with his family and then I would uh, wait until he's done. And um, I always thought that was weird. Uh, but my dad's Egyptian, so he has a different culture and a different, uh, view and um, another thing to give you an idea of my dad is um, say I was sick and I've been I'm a kid and I've got a high fever. He would stay beside on my stay beside my bed like the whole night with a, a wet flannel or cloth and press it onto my head. So that was my dad, right? He was an awesome guy, um, really good guy, and um, he died. He died when I was 18 years old. I got a phone call when I was, um, i just moved to Spain, so I was living in England. And then um, I got a phone call from my mum and she's saying, your, your dad is dying. He's got three weeks to, to three months to live. And um, I just remember going into a shower and it's absolutely bawling my eyes out. It's like a baby, like just crying. And then I uh, flew back to England and um, like I said, my dad was Egyptian, so we um, 
flew him to, to be with his family and all of us as well. Um, we went to Egypt because his family couldn't afford to come to England because the flights were expensive at the time and so we flew all to Egypt. So I watched my dad die and he was, a, he was a big guy, not a fat guy, but very strong man. And watching him go into a skinny man um, and this cancer consuming him um, was the hardest thing I ever saw. So he, um, we took him to Egypt and um, I guess the doctor uh, put the ballpark figure as three weeks to three months to live and he died in three weeks of being in Egypt. Which is before he died, maybe three days before he died, he lost his sight, he'd become blind and he also lost his awareness so he didn't recognise me. So. And then the day, the day he died was the 6th of October, quarter to 6 in the morning. So 6, um, 5.45 in the morning. I come in the room late and he was really breathing heavily. And I come up to the bed and I'm like, hey dad. And then he knew it was me, even though he couldn't see and everything. He could just see something changed in him and he relaxed. And then after that, he took a few more, like I was, maybe it was 10 minutes, but and I, he, was, he, he took his last breath when I was there. So my dad died in my, like, me holding his hand. In Egypt, they do it a little bit different. They have tombs, so me and my cousins and uncles, we took my dad's body down. Um, um, for, well, first of all, they take, you take him to a mosque, because my dad was, uh, was Muslim. So they took him to a, a mosque. They uh, done this different type of prayer, a prayer that they stand up. And um, in that, they um, wash his body. And I think his body was already washed and it was like wrapped in like a cloth. And I lifted my dad's body up and I rested him, not in a coffin, just in a cloth, in a tomb. And you leave and they seal it up and, and then you're just like, what did just happen? And so that, uh, the reason I share this is this obviously the, the, where this uh, anxiety has built up trauma. And uh, also in this time, as I was um, uh, in Egypt still after my dad died, my house in England got broken into. And it got broken into by uh, a friend of mine that I told him to take care of my house. And I don't know if he broke into it or told someone that my house was empty. But him knowing that my house was empty uh, ended up people breaking into my house. So I'm in, I'm in Egypt. I think this could have happened just before my dad died or just after. But this is, I remember, I, I allowed the spirit of anger in. Like I wanted to kill people. Like I wanted to, like I had so much anger and I didn't know Jesus. I was only listening to Eminem music at that time. I was so angry and I wanted to share that what happened after, but I, I forgave this person. It's forgiven. I pray for them. Um, I have no resentment to that person now at all, um, and I bless that person. And uh, that's what I want to say on it. And um, if you do have anyone that um, you want to forgive in your life, trust me, God has given you all that you need to forgive them, and do it. You don't deserve to hold on to the pain anymore. You deserve to have the forgiveness uh, 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 on that situation be upon you. And that's it. You don't need to be um, at war in your mind with that person. Be at peace. It's honestly the best thing. And if I can do it, you can do it. After my dad died, I said, that's it. I'm, I'm out of here. So I traveled to Southeast Asia and 18 year old boy, and I'm in Thailand and you, as soon as I got there, it's just like you're like center of attention. Uh, everyone, um, it's, just a, it's just a worldly, um, insane place. And again, I didn't know Jesus. And uh, cut a long story short, I stayed there for six months. I've done all types of things that a Christian shouldn't be doing. I did it. And um, that's the world. The world lies to you. And uh, my very last night of Thailand. And it was symbolic because it was the last night of my travel before I went back to England. And I kind of got away with everything being there. But like, again, God was like, Adam, the sin will always follow you. And my last night I got heavily drunk and they have this thing in Thailand called Samson Buckets. And um, they are just like, it's pure evilness basically. It's like pure Red Bull mixed with coca-cola mixed with their local whiskey which is like got amphetamines in 
So I remember drinking this stuff on my last night and um, it absolutely destroyed me. Like I was puking every which way and passing out and um, I had to get on a plane back to England the next day and I couldn't even lift my head up. And the reason I shared that is I believe all of this, allowing the spirit of anger in, allowing the spirit of drugs and alcohol, I allowed spirits into me. And um, I went back to England. I went in, um, in England, every house is small, so I lived in this small three bedroom house. Um, it's not like North America, like houses in England are like Lego blocks, like this crammed together. And I, this is so funny, but I, I had a bigger bedroom before I left, but then obviously I moved and my little brother took my bedroom. So I come back into my house and I lost my bedroom and I had to go into the, the small bedroom. And even now I was like, whoa, I lost something. Like, I know I lost my dad, but I lost, like, I don't know why I'm sharing this with you today. Like I lost my room. I, I felt like I got, I lost my place in line, right? Anyway, I was playing this video game late at night time and it was a game called Metal Gear Solid. And um, I'm playing this video game and then all of a sudden something inside of me like rushes and moves and I'm like, whoa, like what was that? And it kind of dissipated. And then I'm playing again and then all of a sudden, vroom, the spirit of anxiety just crushed me. And it was my first panic attack. So I'm having these anxiety attacks for the first time. No one knows anything really how to help me. So I'm stuck in, in, in basically I'm bedridden. Um, can't leave the house. That took um, a big toll on me. And like I said, depression kicked in and then suicide kicked in. And um, I would have been this maybe six months, from, I don't know, I'm guessing these numbers, but three to six months of me struggling. And um, I'm gonna be vulnerable. Like I, I did try to commit suicide. And um, we had this chin up bar where you go and chin up bars and I put a scarf around it. And you know, was it a, was it a great job of doing it? No, but I, I'm like for me looking back, I'm so glad that I didn't do it right. Um, so I put this scarf on around uh, the chin up bar, and I put it around my neck, and I was just like, I was just letting it, like just feeling it on my neck, on my neck, like feeling it. And um, again, I wasn't a Christian. Uh, I didn't know a loving God. And I just felt in my, I felt in my innards, like in my, in my depths. It's like, it's like, give me a chance. Give me a chance, child. Give me a chance. And again, I, I don't know, remember exact words, but that's what I'm feeling right now. It's like, you ain't gonna do this. Give me a chance. Or, or it's like, you're at the end of your rope. Now come to me. And I was like, whoa, what is that? I take the scarf off, obviously I didn't uh, succeed, which is a blessing because your life is beautiful. And uh, just to stop right there for a second, if you are thinking or in a, in a place like that, um, don't. Your life is beautiful and it's fearfully and wonderfully made and it's for a reason and it's to glorify the Lord and no one is out of touch of the Lord's presence and he loves you and he's got a plan for you and don't, don't give up. Don't give up. I got connected to this massage place. It's not a massage place. It's kind of a healing place, but it's like Southeast Asian um, healing place. And it's called Key Health. And I honestly, when I, it, as I shared a story, it did help me, but you know, I don't know what it is. I told a story now and it kind of seems a little bit new agey, but I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, cut long story short, I got connected with these people. I was at an event, um, looking at me, I looked fine. I was pretty, I'd lost some weight, but you would never know what was going on internally. So this lady comes up to me. Um, she says, you're not doing too well, are you? I said, no, she says, you need to come here to get a massage. Oh, not a massage, just come to get therapy. So, okay, great. Woman, red hair, South African accent, awesome. Okay, so I said, sure, I'll be there. So a few days later, my friends, they loved me. Obviously, they didn't know how to help me, but they all come with me into London. I was really struggling to get on, because in England, in London, we have underground trains. It's like a bit claustrophobic, you know, we have anxiety, all things coming kind of thing. So they took me to this place, you know, it's pretty cool. Like, I liked them, they were nice to me. 
and they started doing this massage on me and then I felt my stomach go like blah 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 and then um because all of my pain was in my stomach like and then um I got home that night and I saw an aeroplane on TV and at that time in my life I was trying to move to Canada and every time I'd think about moving to Canada I'd have an anxiety attack because being on the plane and all that stuff, claustrophobic imaginations and um, I, I saw a plane and I didn't have an anxiety attack and I was like oh wow. So I kept going to this place to get this uh, therapy and I've become like, I don't know, they wanted to do to share my story. So I shared my story on a camera. They recorded me uh, sharing, a cam uh, sharing my story of how I found this place. And again, not to go into too much details, but I told them the woman with a South African red hair, a uh, woman comes up to me, says I need to come here. Anyway, after the recording was done, the lady behind the camera is like, what are you talking about? There was no woman with red hair that day. I was there. With, I have no idea who you're talking about. And I was like, okay. She told me to come, so I come. And then looking back at that time, I was like, an angel. So like, that, that must have been an angel. And uh, again, I didn't know Jesus Christ. But it got me strong enough uh, to, and this is now in 2006. My cousin come from Canada. He come to get me and we flew back to Vancouver. And I come with a one year working visa. And um, I started getting better, I started feeling good. Started feeling good, but not being good. I started partying, started hanging out with my cousin's friends, and you know, doing things that we shouldn't be doing. Um, I started getting depressed again. About about six months, maybe no, maybe sorry, about probably a year into it, maybe 2007, and um, I started getting anxious again. And I moved into this place with my roommate at the time, and um, I was there. I was, I was like, not again, not again. Like, I need help. So I said, that's it. So I, no one was in my place. My roommate was out. So I got down on my hands and knees, and I said, God, it doesn't matter who you are. I don't care who you are. I'm ready to accept you. I prayed that prayer, and I did not expect, I didn't know who was going to come in. Muhammad, Buddha. I don't know, but I looked up from praying that prayer and I saw the number 316. And I saw this number 316 on the oven and then for two weeks I kept seeing the number 316 again and again and again and again. And uh, I remember it was some connection to uh, the Bible because I remember the wrestler, there was a wrestler at the time called Stone Cold Steve Austin in the WWF, random, I know. And um, he had a t-shirt that said Austin 316. And I think he obviously is wearing that to take the mic. But um, I knew it was something was powerful about that number. Because I, I grew up in England and at the time, as I was growing up in England, when I was in elementary school, they used to sing Christian songs just before the government took them out. And he used to sing, God's got the whole world in his hands, got the whole wide world in his hands. And I used to love him. I used to love him. And I remember I loved him so much because I run back home um, once and I told my dad, I said, Dad, I love singing these Christian songs. And obviously my dad was Muslim. He, he wasn't too strict, but he's like, you don't have to sing them songs. And I'm like, no, I want to sing them, you know. I want to sing them. I've always been a rebellious, I've always been rebellious for Jesus. Even, even that I didn't know him, I've always been a rebel for him. And I don't, I don't want to come across as like, because being a rebel is like, you don't want a rebellious spirit, but I kind of always been a, re a rebel for Jesus. And um, I knew he was powerful. So I have an uncle here in Canada and he's a born again Christian, um, former Muslim, um, become a Christian. So. I went over to his house two weeks later and I shared that I keep seeing the number 316 and he starts crying his eyes out and he reads the Bible, John 316 and says to me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that anyone that believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. And that was it. I've become a Christian. You know, after a few weeks or months after that was a process of finally, I put my hand up one day, but that was the moment I was become a Christian. Yeah, praise the Lord. Become your brother and sister. So, 
Damn. <laughs> I got your brother and sister. No, you guys become my brothers and sisters. <laughs> so, um, I can hear my wife laughing in the background somewhere. But, um, so that was, so that was my first story of, of um, anxiety. And obviously growing in my faith, anxiety really got pushed to the side. And I thought anxiety was eradicated. I really did. And um, it wasn't. It wasn't eradicated. But God gave me time to grow and to heal and to strengthen. I really felt, he, he says, it's like, Adam, I'm going to take this pain away from you for a season. Or in this case, years. But I'm going to give it back to you one day when you're strong enough to hold it. And... Um, so in that time I grew in my faith and, um, you know, changed everything about my life. I'd done a complete 180. If you ever knew me prior, um, that Adam is dead. You'll never find that Adam again because I know the truth and the truth set me free. So in March 2020, um, I had my second uh, round of anxiety attacks and um, I woke up um, it's like around that time in March 2020 and I woke up and at the time I was really struggling with seasonal allergies I couldn't breathe but I woke up about two or three in the morning and I couldn't breathe and I'm like what's going on I'm dying and, and I'm scared scared and and I'm like and, and I'm like saying Jesus 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 and then this what I realized it was anxiety I was having an anxiety attack and it just started to wash away his blood just started washing it away it's going away all right and it was, um, and then that led me on like, and at that time I had no one in, in my life that was there to su really support me. And I was living by myself. And in that time I met Sarah and we started communicating and um, and then we had our first Zoom call on July 9th. And I was like nervous, but there was still a bit of anxiety, but I was like, no way, it's not stopping me from meeting my wife. So. You know, we got to build our, 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 our relationship online and then as you know, we got married in October 2020. And, um, you know, I was still struggling with a little bit, but it was kind of a mild anxiety. And then, and then it took me to uh, January 2022, so this year, January. And this is when the third round of anxiety come and this is, this is what obviously what you know about. We, we asked you to pray for me and you guys did pray for me and I felt them prayers. It was, so needed without your prayers i don't know it would have been so tough and um it was terrible and i've not shared this but i'm, I'm going to share it today so it was a sunday night and i go downstairs to take a shower but earlier in that day i watched a video and it was just like i don't know some progressive doctor talking about um um covid and hearts and it just it frightened me i, I allowed a fear into me and it was, but it was in the back of my mind. I didn't really know it was there. And even now, I'm sharing this. It's still a, these memories are still a little bit tender for me. I still, it's like I'm like I feel like I'm going to trip myself up with these memories. And anyway, but they're not because confession is good. So I'm just confessing this to you. So I allowed this spirit of fear in. And then by the night time, I go to take a shower, and I'm in the shower, literally like just got my hair wet, and. I start having an anxiety attack and a really, the worst one I've ever had. And it was like coming from my gut, like this noise coming out of me, like, oh, I'm dying, I'm dying. And then I run upstairs, just like, like run out of the shower, just put, grab the towel and, and then went up and Sarah was upstairs. I'm like, Sarah, like, come, I need you to come to me. And she knew, like, I, cause I don't call it on her like that ever. So she knew it was serious. So I, um, she comes down, I tell her what happened, and uh, it was like four days of like, I don't want to say hell, but it felt like, it was like hell, it was like death. And then um, in them four days, I, my emotions were shot, I'm crying out to Jesus, I'm crying. I go to the hospital the next day, I'm crying. I'm like, guys, help me, help me. And I'm crying my eyes out, and then they're like a million questions, and I'm like, uh, guys, I feel like I'm dying. Like, help me here. Like, I'm I ne I'm coming to the hospital for help, and I feel like you're pushing me away. And it's like we go to the hospital, and it, uh, Toronto just had the worst snowstorm ever. So even get into the hospital was like a miracle because uh, Sarah's mum drove us there, and I was like, it was like oh, it's so difficult to drive in the snow. And then it's like I'd I'd sleep 
in the night time during these four days and it was my sleep was okay but as soon as i woke up the anxiety would rush in and that's what you like people that deal with anxiety will notice it's like it just rushes in you wake up first five seconds you're like oh this is i feel normal again i feel great then vroom, comes in right and they come in and um it was so bad i'm crying my eyes out i'm saying goodbye to sarah i'm like i really i thought i was dying like I thought I was dying. Every every night I'd go to sleep, I was like, I'm not gonna wake up. I'm not gonna wake up. I can't take this. And that's anxiety. It's like, anxiety is a bully. It's like, it's like, I'm gonna beat you up after school. And then you get there and it does nothing. But it, like, you're all fearful. Like, it's, okay, this is how I paint that picture. It's like, it's a bully, he's in, he's in school. It's like, I'm gonna beat you up after school. You better be there. And then. You're so scared for the whole time in school. And then you come out at night uh, after school and the bully never shows up. There probably is a lot of the ins and outs and the details um, of the, the third one, but you get the point. Like, it was my worst of anxiety and, uh, you know, praise the Lord. The Lord was so gracious and sending prayers my way and sending people my way and, I'm going to share this highlight from it. So day four uh, took us to leave in Toronto to the plane. So I'm going to share this highlight. And um, so I'm on this plane. I'm I, I can't even. I'm not even moving. I'm so scared. Like I'm going to be sick. I'm going to pass out. All these feelings next to me. And so the plane's about I don't know about five hours. And um, I have this guy sitting next to me, young guy. And we get on the plane, and obviously the plane's taken off. We're flying. And um, for the first two and a half hours, I'm not even moving. I'm like just focused, like scripture, saying scripture, like not moving, got my hood up, and like just get me through, get me off this plane, like kind of mentality. And then uh, um, Sarah's mum gave us free muffins, and uh, so I have free two for us. And then I just felt led in my spirit. I said, turn to him. I was like, do you want a muffin? And then he, he said, yeah. And you think uh, in in today's uh, hysteria of COVID, no one even wants to, uh, let alone uh, talk to people, let alone take a muffin from someone. And he said, yeah. And I turned to him and then the spirit just took over and I um, started talking. I found out he's a, a young soccer player for a, a local university. And they told me he had a knee injury. So I felt led right there and then in my weakest state. I said, can I pray for you? And I laid hand on his shoulder, his left shoulder, because he was on my right side. And I started just calling down healing from heaven for him. In the name of Jesus, Lord, please heal him. Heal him right now. Take that pain away from him. And he was touched. He was touched. And then for about an hour after that, we were just speaking about God. And his questions were amazing. It's like, so uh, as an 18-year-old, how do I focus uh, not on what the world wants to focus? How can I keep my mind on, on Christ? Because he, he grew up Catholic, so he had some knowledge of God. But didn't really know God in his heart as a relationship. So I got to share that with him and um, it was it was awesome. So praise the Lord, I got to share that with him and encourage him. So that was my, the anxiety and it's been a battle. Like uh, this is not a story of overcoming anxiety. Like I, re I had a, a mild anxiety attack um, on Tuesday night and uh, so I'm not over it. And I don't, and, and I don't want to be coming on here saying this is what I did to fix it. Like no, I, I'm still in the fight. I'm still battling. And I've got some notes here, but um, there is things to combat it. Do uh, spiritual, do uh, physical, like a doctor, and do mental, like therapy. Like do them and do all of them, attack them from all sides because God uses doctors. God uses therapy. Uh, um, you know what they're called? Like He uses them. Like, he, so don't think it's just like, I'm, I'm, like obviously number one is the word, like we speak the word, but God is, is good, he's good. And so I wanna, I really wanna make that clear, like attack anxiety from all sides. Like if you're going to war with someone and you come from three different ways, are you gonna destroy them? So attack it at all fronts. God gave me this in, in this journey. And I'm gonna say this to you raw, in a raw form and you take it and pray on it. So in this time, he says, Adam, I want you to know my heart. So number one, the father's heart, okay? And then number two, 
letting the word go deep. So read, read, let read your Bible, read it, read it. Let it go deep, let it saturate, let it go deep, deep, deep. And number three is walk in your authority. Walk into your authority. Like, wow, authority, we have authority. You, you have intense, immense authority given to you from Jesus Christ. Now, we went to a meeting last night and a prophetic man was there. Amazing, amazing guy, really good guy. And I was speaking to him at the end and he's looking at me, like looking to my left and my right, he's like, whoa, whoa, and this is a genuine guy. He's like, you are surrounded by mighty angels. I was like, ooh, that's, that's, that sounds good, you know? But it, the reason, the reality is, it is. I am surrounded by mighty angels, I, and I know that. Um, and so are you, and so are you. And I want you to remember that. So when you walk, you're walking with a, like a squad, a, 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 an army. You're not walking by yourself. You are walking into dark places full of his light that's shining through. The, ho the Holy Spirit is around you. Your, your angels are next to you. You are walking in authority. So Father's heart, letting the word go deep, walk into your authority. And what is all this for? Look, I have my notes for you today. All of this for, all of this, what I've worked out, why I'm going through anxiety. And I'll be honest with you, because I don't trust the father fully. I, my father died on me. He left me at my vulnerable age. It's not his fault, but I lost trust. But God, our Abba Father is restoring trust in me to him. I trust God in, I knew he was going to bring me my wife. I knew it. I knew it. And people would try and deflate me and say, no, settle, settle. No. I knew God was bringing me the most beautiful, godly woman. I knew that. But then sometimes I can't even trust him with my health. Every time I get like a, I get, I don't feel well. No, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. This is it. I always, I feel like that. So I don't trust him with my health. So there's areas I have to be honest with you today that, I need to trust God more in. And if that, <clears throat> if that resonates with you, trust, and we spoke about this a few weeks, is, is the ultimate battle to fight this. And I didn't know this, is rest. I get into a nice posture if I'm laying down or on the couch or on the bed, and I say, God, I'm, I, I come into your presence. I choose to come into your rest. Speak to me. Or let me rest. And then I don't allow my thoughts to wander. And I just rest in him. It's a game changer. Game changer. So um, God gave me a vision once, once upon a time. And so I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. This is it. I'm going to paint it for you. And you know I love to paint uh, visions that he gives me. So it's a, um, it's a vase. Uh, a vase. or It's like a c ceramic vase. Beautiful. It's beautiful, right? You know, some of you put flowers in, but it's no flowers are in it. So keep your eyes closed. And um, it was beautiful, but now it's got, it's been, it's been smashed a little bit. It's got a crack in it. It's got a hole in it. Still, the shape is still there, but it's been torn apart. It's been beat up by the world. It's been through some anxious moments. It's been through some really hard, difficult times. It's got some holes in it. Can't hold water anymore. It's unusable. That's the way he painted for me. And then all of a sudden the lights come off. The lights, the lights, the lights go off. It's dark. You can still see it. It's like moonlight or something. Still like you can still see the picture, but it's dark. And then all of a sudden, God comes out of nowhere in this vision. And it's like a light. It puts like, like, you know, like, you're, you know, you, sometimes you go to them restaurants, you get them hanging lights. It's like a, it's a light bulb. It's still like the wire. Anyway, he grabs this light and it slowly goes down into the vase. And then all of a sudden, this beautiful piece illuminates, illuminates this room because of the cracks, because of the brokenness. And then this thing that was once upon a time broken, just turned into the ultimate light giver 
Because Jesus is the light and his light is in us and through our brokenness today that he shines through. So this is where I really want to encourage you. Your brokenness is beautiful and declare that because God wants to use that to set people free. My anxiety is a struggle. I, at times I wish I didn't have it. You know, only people of Jesus has got to shine through me and my weaknesses. You know, all know that scripture is like, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. You know that. Uh, a beautiful song I listened to the other day. One it could be a little blurry, but I will link it below. And it's by Melissa Helser and it's called Sound Mind. Um, listen to that. It's an awesome song. Because she says at the end, um, it's an inheritance to have a sound mind. It's an inheritance. And when she says that, um, I want you to declare that. God has given you a sound mind. He hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Sound mind. So if you are like me and you're struggling mentally, declare his promises, declare his inheritance for you. Walk in that. Walk in that authority. You're surrounded by mighty warriors. You, when you walk into dark rooms, the enemy shudders because you're, his light through you ex it explodes. So um, my wife's not here today, so I can, I can talk about her quickly. Um, my wife's an amazing woman. And um, you all know that I like to edify her and encourage her. And um, she's doing some amazing work. Um, I see her every day, what she does. And um, I really want you to pray for her and myself, but really pray for my wife. She is building something um, that's gonna change the world. And it is changing the world for the kingdom. She's gonna help a lot of people through her program. Mm -hmm. And I want you to pray for her and encourage her and um, just love on her because she's done something. She started this YouTube, cha YouTube channel uh, way before I was in the picture. And she was getting like 50 views, 100 views, and she could have quit. Many times she could have quit. The devil tried his best to make her quit, but she persevered and she kept going and she kept going. And look, right now we're nearly at 5,000 subscribers. Praise the Lord. One subscriber is great. But look, we're growing. And all because she didn't listen to the devil. And so. I want that to encourage you as well. Don't listen to him. Your brokenness is beautiful. And what I mean by that is God's got a plan for you. And he's going to use you severely. And um, don't give up. Don't give in. Stay on the path. Even if you get knocked down, get up again. Don't stay down. Keep going. Walk in your authority. Declare scripture. Fight from all fronts. Don't sit there and let the enemy, because he's a bully. He's, he, 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 en the enemy is a bully, not just anxiety, because like, it, it all comes from fear. Like The enemy is a bully. He, he will pick on you. He will wire you down. He will kick you. But when you stand up, he runs away. Runs away so fast. So I'm going to pray for you right now. And I'm going to declare you're going to stand up. Our Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, we give you thanks, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we call, we just call, we call to Abba Father. Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, for the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray for everyone who's watching, that's hearing my voice, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, pick them up, dust them off, kiss them on their head, kiss them on their head, Lord. Bless their mind right now. Bless their mind in the name of Jesus. But bless them. Lord, break off any chains. Break off anything that's keeping them down. We, we declare, no, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, pick them up. Love on them. Let them walk in their authority. Let your word go deep. Father, show them your heart. And let their brokenness shine through. And today, 
Lord, show them that every single part of their brokenness is going to be used. Lord, we love you. We love you. And we can't wait to the, the time that we see you in person and give you the biggest hug. Ah, Holy Spirit, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So guys, hopefully this camera is still recording. Um, my wife's going to come in and turn it off. Um, we love you um, so much. And um, yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Bye.